The conference is now being recorded. Okay, great. This is uh, Senior Master Coordinator Bob Ferguson with Lee Bordelon, our intrepid exactly trainer of all things PWS, back office, and all that. And I've been having a grand time over the last couple of weeks working with Lee, putting my personal website really in good shape, you know, that process being, for me, entirely counterintuitive. Things that I would have thought would have been really, really great turned out not to be so great. Things that I hadn't occurred to me, ways of, of dealing with the PWS. Uh, so I just wanted to share that with everyone, have Lee go through some of the things that she taught me so that you can do it. We'll talk about uh, creating special you know, pages that are not published, that are specialty pages. We'll be creating a lot. And uh, if you all create some eventually that you would like to share with a group, you can give, you can, you will show you, uh, we'll have a, a library of HTML codes. You can literally pop up a new page, drop the HTML code in, change the email so that the leads come to you, not me or Lee, and you're off to, off to the races. And so we really have uh, an almost unlimited capacity, uh, well, limited only by the number of, of pages that we can have. We can always swap those out since it's so easy to do that if we have a special thing and we've busted our 30-page, uh, you know, hidden hidden page limit. Uh, so, uh, Lee, uh, with that, let's get rolling. Well, okay. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, you know, when Shackley created the personal website, they created it in such a fashion that anybody could actually, without doing anything, have a functional place for people to learn more about Shackley and our products. The problem is that you guys are more advanced than that, and you're trying to brand yourselves, uh, which is really what this PWS should be about, um, and and you want to... You have multiple sources of, of uh, information, and, and you want to be able to control people, uh, people's path on your personal website to get to the information that interests them. Because, because Shackley has so many products and so many ways to join and so much information, having it all available for everyone to just look at tends to be overwhelming. So the purpose of today's call is to teach you some best practices and to help you to create the kind of uh, entry points that you need for the focus of your business. So uh, this is a, a view of my Shackley uh, personal website as uh, it is created by Home Office, the default pages. Nothing personal going on here, uh, nothing special, uh, nothing that would sell you over 40,000 other active builders. Um, and so the goal here is to create um, a, 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 the kind of page that makes people say, yeah, that's the guy I want to join with. So first things first, this is your manager in your member center, so my business, uh, my website up at the top, and this is the edit content section. I'm going to remove the pages live on my site um, because I don't want those pages. You cannot edit the corporate pages anyway, so they're kind of useless for those of you who are more advanced with the internet. Instead, I'm going to create custom pages. Now, with this particular website template, you can build up to 30 pages. Every single page is live and can be hidden from search so that even if someone went to Google and looked for it, they couldn't find it. The only way they could access that page is if you gave them the link. Um, and that's probably not a bad idea, to be honest, depending on what kind of page you want to hide it from search. Um, I believe to get the most bang out of your, your website, you should have one, possibly two, but definitely one page on your navigation menu. And your navigation menu are, is these little buttons down the left-hand side. So, and that would be your profile. You need to tell people who you are, what you do, how long you've been doing it, what you are going to do for the person who joins your team. You are selling your skills. Now, this is just one place. I'll call it a channel on the Internet. 
If you're going to have multiple channels like Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn, your profile, your business profile needs to be consistent across all platforms, uh, all channels. So in this case, you can see I have a very clear headshot. I'm smiling at the camera like I like what I do. I tell you what I do, how long I've been doing it, um, and what I'll do for anyone who comes with me. Same thing for you. You are not a Shackley distributor. Don't ever cage yourself in just that small. You are the owner of a global distributorship company. You are a wellness coach. You are um, a, a retirement coach. Um, what is it you said the other day, Bob, a, 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 a career coach? Um, there are many more things that you do in the scope of your business. So don't write, I'm a Shackley Independent Distributor. I'm pretty sure they'll get that from the top left-hand corner of every page. Sell yourself. You are your brand. Otherwise, they might as well just sign up under Shackley.com, right, and let me assign them out to just random people. Sell yourself. Um, this is not a place for your Shackley testimonial. That goes somewhere completely different and should not be posted in the links down the left. Remember, your goal here is to provide um, um, a consistent and very focused message. So let's say we create one of the special pages I'm going to teach you how to, how to create. The bottom line is once they get done reading that page, they only got one other place to go other than shopping, and that's to read about you. And that's controlling the path they take. That's controlling the, count, the amount of information that you let them see. So let's talk a little bit about the kinds of pages that you should be creating. At a base level, the whole reason that you have a personal website is because it's the only place that people can buy from you on the Internet at retail or to join under you without you having to worry about them getting assigned to someone else. But in order to do that, you have to drive traffic to your site. Here's a little bit of information you may not know. Search engines, Google, Yahoo, all of those places you go to find stuff on the Internet, they treat all of MyShackley.com like one website. Now, we know that there's about 40,000 personal websites out there. But if the search engines treat them like one, it's very difficult for your site to appear in the search results when people are searching for things. So you have to drive the traffic. How do you do that? You create content, first of all. It doesn't matter really, what, it doesn't matter what the content is. It can be an article, it can be pictures, it can be videos, but you create the content, then you drive the traffic to it. We'll get into driving traffic after we build a few pages. Um, so first things first, I would build a page um, called, uh, well, you could call it whatever you want, but it's announcements page, right? So I like to find articles, giving appropriate um, attr attributes to, you know, who owns it. I, I, I caught this from CNN. Uh, there's the title, there's the date, there's the person who wrote it, there's the little excerpt I want to talk about, there's a link to go read the rest of the article. You have to make sure you put that in there. Um, and then I make my comment. doesn't sound like a big deal. I can do this in five minutes. The big deal is when you start sharing it on your other channels. So I share it to Facebook. My Facebook is connected to my Twitter, so it's on Facebook and Twitter, and to LinkedIn. Um, and then I made a, an archive on Blogger so that I can continue to update my personal website but still have my comments and my articles and my tips available for people to find. One piece of content that takes me 10 minutes to write, and I have five pages of content. That's very important to search engines. They say, hey, look, this guy's creating a lot of content. We should pay attention to them. And you would be surprised at how much more activity you'll start seeing going from your Facebook and your Twitter to your personal website. Um, so that's one, one type of page I would recommend you build. Plus, the other piece is, without it being on my navigation menu, 
people can read it, think, wow, that chick is awesome. I want to know more about Lee Bordelon. And they can click my profile and learn more about me. They can contact me. They can join me, right? You could I just control the path they take. So other kinds of pages that you can create are product spotlight pages. A product spotlight page would be um, something like this. I took um, um, an e-card that we have that you can't edit, um, and I put in uh, the pricing of what you would pay at Walgreens and G&C for a 30-day supply of the same amount of vitamins and minerals as are in Vitalizer. And I did a price comparison. And so when people say, oh, your vitamins are so expensive, I go, mm, maybe you'd like to look at what you're paying for and how much you're getting, right? And then I can show them. If you put it on auto ship, you're paying up to $30 a month less. They can't argue with that. That's straight up math. You can go look at GNC and Walgreens and look at their prices. You have to look at the amount of vitamins and minerals, and that's how you come to this price. I find this to be a very powerful page. It includes the online brochure for Vitalizer and the video about Vitalizer. So I've got a threefer in one page. Again, not on my navigation menu because this is not the message for everyone I'm trying to reach, right? Bob and I were talking about um, um, niche markets and focusing your efforts. I'm going to try to say this as plainly as I can. Shackley does have something for anyone. Um, the problem is that there's so much that you can't talk to everyone. So you need to sit down and think about who you are and what are your primary areas of interest and expertise? For some people, it's autism. For some people, it's fibromyalgia. For others, it's IBS. For others, it's opportunity. You need to find what we call an entry path. And those entry paths are your focus. So make a circle, put your name in it, and make four lines coming off of each end of it. Write your four interests, right, your four focuses. That's what you're going to use to start targeting your efforts because you have to go find the people who are interested in the same things that you're interested in. You've got to go meet with them online or in person using green meetups and talk about what you know. Not talk about Shackley. Talk about what you know. Remember that with cold marketing, if you beat them over the head with a Shackley stick, you're going to be shown the door. But if you show your knowledge and expertise in all the things that you've learned from Shackley, from our clinicals, from our tests and everything, then you're going to be known as a person who can be trusted. And they will trust your opinion and they will take your advice and they will refer people to you. It takes time to do this. But this is how you're going to build your audience. So think about your niche markets and then you're going to go find where they are and interact with them there and drive them back to specific pages such as this one. We have, uh, you can create a calendar. Um, I used to have a calendar of events before they started let me put my events on the home office page. Um, I'd have a calendar of events and every month I'd update it with where I'm training and how to register for my training. Um, and so you can put that up. Um, I would not put it on the menu. Um, rather, I would send it to my new distributors. Um, the other thing uh, that you can do, for instance, I created the Sunny Vitamin. I don't know if you guys saw, but they kind of buried the vitamin D quiz. and. If there's one thing you don't ever want to do is say, go to this website, click this button seven times, then click this button twice. Are you kidding me? I'm done. I'm going to the grocery store to make, you know, get food for dinner. I'm not clicking a button seven times. So what I did was I took a picture and I put my vitamin D link on it, and it takes them right to my vitamin D quiz, and they can take the quiz and – you know, the email portion is useless. It doesn't actually send you an email. But at least they can take the quiz and get back to you. So the, you, you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, these are great pages. How do I get people to go to these pages? You have to send them to the page. So how do you do that? When you have all these pages, and like I said, you can have up to 30, built into your back office, 
when you view it, they're all live. All you do is copy the URL. Now, sometimes these URLs are pretty ugly. So what we recommend is that you create an account at bit.ly. That's B-I-T dot L-Y. It's free. It's easy. And you can keep a whole library of shortened um, URLs there. So, sure, I could just go to bit.ly, paste in my URL for that page, and shorten it, and I have it. But then I'd have to recreate it every single time. Wouldn't it be better to just go ahead and keep that library of URLs and you can just refer to that every time you want to send someone to a specific page? Um, it's much uh, simpler, and the URL is very social media friendly. Um, you don't want big, ugly links. And here's the other piece. You cannot tell from this link, uh, bit.ly forward slash 1TKUUGE, you can't tell that that's a Shackley thing. You don't want to ever give people the opportunity to say, oh, Shackley uh, soap, before you get the chance to tell them that we're a heck of a lot more than soap. So this also masks the URL until you have a chance to talk to them. Uh, so that's number one, create your library of URLs. Um, let's go through and, and create a single page real quick. Um, Bob, you wanted to create a, a page with a, a film strip in it. I don't want to get too, I don't want to get too technical here, but when you're yeah. creating a new page. Lee, Lee, let, let's, let, let, let's, let's create kind of a generic page. Uh, we'll do that. Uh, we'll do that after the call. And then we'll, okay. We'll, and then this, this is going to be the only the first of a number of maybe even every, uh, certainly every two weeks. We'll have you on. We'll let people go and, and play with what we're doing. And then we'll have you on again. And we're just going to do this every two weeks until we all become PWS ninjas. <laughs> okay. Sounds like a plan. So step one when creating a custom page, the page name is what appears as your URL. So you want to be sure not to put any uh, weird characters. Try to be real straightforward with it. You cannot use punctuation, but you should spell it correctly. Plus, it appears at the top of the page, so you don't want to, you know, have it looking all funky. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and create a, pra a page for sport, sport, uh, the sports teams. So pure performance. Um, I always recommend that you put your content in first, your text. Um, what is pure performance? Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to just put in a whole bunch of content. Now, let's say, let's take a, talk about a couple of rules about pages. Number one, if you have to scroll more than twice, you're going to lose them. One scroll of your mouse scroll is enough. Don't put too much information in a page. Instead, um, keep your paragraph short and use hyperlinks to go to pages that have a lot more information, right? Let them get the gist of what you want them to know. Um, so if you want to put in a video, there's a couple of things you should know about videos. Number one, you need to have your own or a group, if you will, a YouTube account. You do not want your leads who can figure out how to trace back to a YouTube account. You don't want them going to someone else's YouTube account uh, because you borrowed a video from there. So keep all your videos in one library and use that. Um, secondly, um, you want to make sure you use um, tag um, keywords uh, in the descriptions and titles of your videos on YouTube or Vimeo, whichever one you use. Uh, and keywords are the words that people would use in a search engine to find information on a subject, on a topic. So if you're doing pure performance, I would not use pure performance as a keyword because that's only meaningful to us. Instead, I would put Olympic, training, athlete, gold, silver, uh, names of athletes, those kinds of things, because people will be interested in what those people did <clears throat> in the Olympics. Okay. Uh, so I want to put a video in right in that space there. So I'm just going to type in the words insert video. 
because I'm not really great at HTML code. I don't expect you to be either. This is called a cheat, so you know where to put the video. Now, when you go to YouTube, you need the embed code. Vimeo has it as well. So you want to get to share and then embed. And it's going to give you this weird looking thing. That's your code. This is HTML code. So first things first, choose your size. I like to keep it relatively small. Um, uh, 560 by 315 pixels is a pretty decent size. Uncheck show suggested videos because you don't get to choose what the videos are suggested and you could end up with something really inappropriate on your web page. Trust me, it happened to me. Then you just click into the box where all that code is, select all, and control C, copy the code. Again, you don't have to know what it means, you just know, have to know how to put it in. Because this is HTML code, we're back in our page, we got to use the HTML tool. And all you have to do is find the words, insert video, only the words insert video, not the carrots before or after, because that'll break the code. Control V, paste it right over those words, and click update. Now you'll see a yellow box. That's correct. You should see a yellow box. If you want to see if the video is working, you got to go to preview. So click the preview tool, and there's your video, and it will play. So that's working properly. The next thing I would recommend is selecting your verbiage and make sure that you use at least a 14 point, point font. Um, the web tends to make this, these verbiage, uh, the words really small, make it easy for people to read. Now, if I were going to go to Shackley and get some verbiage, I'm just going to copy this verbiage to put in my page so I can show you this next piece. So you want to make your pages skimmable. A lot of people are busy. So if you can make a page skimmable and still get your point across, then you're doing a good job. So the way that I do it is I use bold and color. Now, so I've got my bold, and so the things that I want to stick out, fueled the dreams, world-class athletes, and Ellie Bremer. So when someone looks at this page, what they're going to see is Shackley has fueled the dreams, 100 medals, world-class athletes, elite athletes, Ellie Bremer. Well, that's going to get someone's attention if they are, in fact, at least a club-level athlete, right, if, they're, if they know who these guys are. So they've skimmed, they've gotten where they need to be. Now the next thing I would say is make sure there's a hyperlink so they can learn more about the products. So if I were to say I want them to go to do the sports nutrition products, that's going to be under healthy foundations. Then I go to sports. So here's my sports page, right? Highlight the URL, control C, and copy it. Edit your page and 
add in your verbiage. What do you want the words to say? So I'm going to say click here to learn more about Shackley Sports Nutrition. And click here is the words I want them to use, uh, to click on. So you highlight the words, you click the link tool, you paste it in the URL field, Always change the target to open a new window. That way one page is staying on the place where you're having them read and watch the video. The other page opens up brand new to take them to the shopping page. Now I'm going to close these pages and show you how it works. So I'm viewing my pure performance page. Here's the click here link. And it opens another tab going directly to that page. The last thing I'll show you is how to insert an image. Now, images need to be hosted online. Um, that means they need to be hosted on a public website, whether it's Facebook or Photo Bucket or Instagram. And the share portion, it has to be public. If you have your, um, your images uh, private or only with the link, they're not going to show here. So you have to make sure that that library of images for your personal website and your emails are public. So here is an image I found. Um, and this is the Pure Performance team. So I could copy the direct link. It's on my photo bucket account. Sorry, I'm having, it's the image location that's also going to work for you. So in your page, wherever you want the image to appear, you place your cursor, you click the image tool, you paste in the URL. This is another opportunity for you to put in an image description. With images, descriptions are important because there are, uh, not just because um, it lets people mouse over and see what it's about, but there are people who are blind that have these, um, these web programs that search the net and they read the image descriptions for the people who want to learn more about certain things. So this would be um, a, a really good opportunity to gain some clients who are blind. So I'm going to say Olympic athletes who use uh, Shackley Sports Nutrition. And I'm going to use the same uh, for the title because I'm not trying to build a business here. Click insert. Oh, the next thing. Everyone always asks me, how do you get the words to wrap around the picture? That's under appearance. And if you look at this little picture on the right-hand side, you see a little picture of a tree and some Latin. This is what your image and your words are going to look like when you're done. So if I want my image to be on the left-hand side of the page, I will align it on the left. And you can see my words wrap up to the top of the image. But now they're all smashed in. So you need some bubble wrap. Vertical space, top and bottom sp space around your picture. I'm going to put a two. There's no right answer. It's however you like it. And then for horizontal space, that's left and right, I'm going to put in a four. And when you click out, you can see that my words have moved away from the edge of my image, making it much more attractive. Click Insert. There's my picture. Now, it's really large, so I'm going to squish it in just a little bit. And now you can see that my words are wrapped around my picture. I can center my video. I can even make my video a little bit smaller so it fits better on the page. Finally, I'll finish off by increasing the size of the font at the bottom and saving my changes. So when I view my page, I have an image. And when, see how when I mouse over it, it says Olympic athletes who use Shackley Sports Nutrition. That's important. And then there's your click here. So. I did want to show you guys another page. Um, I like to uh, experiment with what I call lead capture pages. Um, now, the best place for this page is not a Shackley website because it's branded. Um, but a, a true lead capture page would be only branded with you as the brand, why you. 
Um, but it, it, it's going to cause an emotional response in the viewer. So you cannot always be the judge of whether or not it's emotional because you're knee deep in Shackley. Um, you might have to have a non-Shackley person look at it. It has to be short and to the point. In this case, the ultimate business, breakthrough products, proven marketing system, unlimited earning potential. Isn't it time to create your success story? Beneath that, I just scraped off um, a video from the Today Show. It played August 14th, and it's all about direct selling being the best, the next, next new wave, uh, uh, especially for women who want to stay home with their kids. But I took it one step further with a little free HTML code from quack.it, I was able to create a pre-qualification form and put it on my website. And so people can fill this out and when they click submit, it's going to send an email to me at the email address I say with the questions and the answers that this person has provided. Um, and so what I've done is pre-qualified them and I now know if they're a looky-loo, if they're only interested in products, if they're trying to recruit me to go to Arbonne, right? I've got that all in front of me right now. Um, and so this would be a great page to, um, it's like a landing page. If you're doing online marketing about opportunity, uh, this would be a great place to send people. Um, I would customize the form with the questions that you would use if you were doing it live. Um, and quack.it uh, really has a lot of code um, available for you for customization, so you don't really have to know HTML code. And so Bob and I were talking, and there are some pages we'd like to design and create the HTML code for you guys um, that you could then just download, you know, copy and paste right into um, a, a page. Uh, the, you would just create a new page, and when you, instead of writing content, you would just click HTML and paste that little sucker right in there, and you would have this, this whole page created. We would improve, uh, provide the instructions as well so that you'd be able to get the email uh, from the person filling out the form. Now, uh, Lee, in that case, so what we would do is when you have the HTML code, what will appear is your email here will be in bold and red. So literally all you have to do is paste the code, look for the bold and red, your email here, copy and paste your email over that, and then all the leads come to you. So that's the only modification you'll need to do on any of these pages. But if you paste the thing and said, nah, I'd rather have something else, and, and you can fiddle around with the tools like this, you can change it any way you want. These are not protected. They're just templates, and you can go in and mess with the thing to your heart's content. Mm -hmm. But we're going to try to make them so that uh, that may be as little necessary as possible. And one other thing I'll say is that I'm going to be with Lee at least a couple times a week. She's probably going to get really sick of <laughs> working with me, but uh, that's okay. She can handle it. Um, I'm going to spend at least two or three hours, if not more, every week with Lee going deep, deep, deep into not only how to put the mechanics together here, but how to go out there and generate our own leads legitimately. You know, a lot of us have been trying to do, you know, lead programs and we pay for leads or we get leads. You know, those things are so picked over, there's nothing but bleached bones on them most of the time. Mm -hmm. If, on the other hand, we can go out and utilizing these tools and other tools, and maybe I'll we'll get her to uh, work with me on creating a true lead capture, you know, that just is branded with me, um, we'll, we'll, I'm going to play in this space until I feel like, I've got some expertise, and then I go out there, and I start generating very significant numbers of highly qualified leads from all around the country. It may even be to the point where I can't handle all of them, so from a geographic basis, maybe we start you know, just parceling them out. You know, no cost. If I have extra leads, we'll give them out. But, I mean, the point is that what we really want to do if we're going to own this business is that we want to be the masters of the business. We want to go out to the marketplace with our uniqueness because those people, 
who come to me will be will be responding, you know, oftentimes, you know, to, you know, some personality element that I might have, depending on how I how I create that page and what I say. So, you know, I think we want to not think about this in a passive way, like we're going to go, you know, get something from somewhere else. We 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 need to spend a few little hours it takes to actually learn this, and I'm going to go deep in it so that we can boil it all down so it's easier for everyone to do. So Lee didn't even know she was going to do that with me, but now she does. <laughs> it's totally fine. I do want to show you guys one other thing. We talked about entry paths. For instance, Vitalizer is the nutrition entry path for Shackley, right? Everything that we've created, and just in case you don't know, let me show you where it is. If you go to... Sorry, it's under my business. If you go to marketing tools, everything under getting started with nutrition is designed to market entering Shackley with Vitalizer. Same thing with Shackley 180 library page assets. So with your personal website, if you decide on the niche markets that you want to start going after, what you can do is create nested pages. A nested page starts with the one page link that you send out. If you're interested in this, check this out. But at each page has a link to another page with more information or a questionnaire or a video. And you can link those pages together, and I call those nested. So here's an example of a nested page. Project Mama, uh, we all know what that is. Um, so. So why wouldn't I want this on the menu? Well, what if my other niche market were athletes, right? Oh, now i got to play with moms, right? You don't want to, to cross market there unless someone says, I'm a mom and I'm training for the Olympics. Then you've got something, right? All right, so here's Project Mama page. You read the page, hear real stories, click here, page two. Videos, videos you can play, still nothing to distract on the left-hand side. Oh, want to learn more? Click here. Goes to page three. This is where the calls are, the email address. Ready to get started right away? Click here. Here's your resources. You can hear audio files, read a brochure. You can click here to get started. That's going to take you to the join now. Or contact me opens up the contact me form. Well, it should anyway. It should link to this form up here in the right so that you can fill that out and say, yes, I'm interested in Project Mama. That's a set of nested pages. So whenever you're designing your personal website nested pages, I recommend that you lay it out on paper. What is your starting point? Because that landing page, the first page you're sending them to, that's the page you're sharing in social media, by email, um, on flyers and, and, and mailers and whatever you're doing. Um, because the rest of the pages are the, the Hansel and Gretel cookie path you want them to follow, right? So once you lay out what your niche markets are, then you build your pages. Um, again, the building pages can be as hard or as easy as you want it to be. If you want to get really schmancy, uh, that's going to take a little extra work and you're probably going to need to call Chris. Um, but, you know, you want them to be attractive, easy to read, um, and use hyperlinks to share more information. Once you do that, it's time to start talking very seriously about how you drive traffic to your site. So I'm just going to leave this page up for now to, to show you guys what I'm up to. Uh, so I have this share button. We have 294 social media sites that we're connected to. Now, if you are not uh, sure where to start, obviously the best place to start is Facebook because everybody's there. Uh, you have to be more careful with Facebook because uh, you, you're not supposed to post businessy stuff on your personal page. But personally, for me, I don't think sharing health tips is business. And so if you stick to that, you're going to fly far under, under the radar. So Facebook, and you can tie your Facebook and Twitter accounts together so that whatever you post on Facebook goes to Twitter. Uh, we're not even going to get into keywords at this point. That's something you can read about online. 
Um, and I, I believe I have some training material posted on my Shackley. Um, but look, you've got Blogger. If you're going to post an article page on my Shackley, then you might want to have an archive. Blogger would be one place to set that up. Um, then you've got all these different sites like, um, uh, la, 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 hold on, Blog Marks, um, Brainify, Buzzy. These are all um, social media sites where people share content. Um, personally, I'm not a big fan of joining too many sites uh, because, you know, I have a lot of work to do. Um, but y you should find at least one or two sites to belong to. Um, and then the last thing I would recommend is get a Google Alerts account. Here's the thing. You want to have conversations with people about the things that you're interested in promoting, right? So in order for you to do that, you've got to have, find out where these people are co congregating and talking. But you also have to build a business. You have to do your income-producing activity. So how are you going to do that? Google Alerts will monitor the web for your content. You can even tell it um, when you click, I want to create an, an alert. Uh, let's try autism. I'm going to create an alert, and here's my options. How often do I want to get an alert? Once a day, as it happens, or once a week? What are my sources? It can be everything, or it could be news, blogs, the web, video, books, or discussions. Remember that you're joining a discussion about a topic that is not Shackley, so it is not your goal to go there and start firehosing people about Shackley. You're going to be talking about the nutrition behind the Shackley products, right? If you're going to talk about Shackley, that has to be done privately. Otherwise, they will throw you off of whatever forum you're on. It's very important you follow the rules of engagement on every social media site. Uh, language, obviously, whatever language you speak. Region. Look, you can drill down in the United States. You don't have to go worldwide. We can't obviously send worldwide. Um, and what kind of results do you want? Do you want to start with all so you can feel your way through or just the best? And then deliver to what email address? Once you create this alert, you're going to start getting scads of links. And so here's, here's another version. Uh, down at the bottom, this is the first thing that happens. It already is giving me uh, links to people, uh, articles about autism. Look, federal officials order Medicaid to cover autism services. Well, that leaves an opening for you guys because what if you can get the Medicaid practitioner to, uh, to use the Shackley products? Then they got that covered and you've got a sale. These are important bits of information that can have an effect on your business. But the bottom line is you're looking, let me change this to blogs or discussions. I want to see what people are talking about. So nobody's discussing it. Let's try blogs. So let's see, the one year since my Asperger's autism diaspora ended. You could go and have a conversation with this person, see what they did. Um, and start interacting, or you could simply join um, an autism website that talks about the natural um, um, relief um, of autism symptoms. I'm trying to be very careful how I word that. But the bottom line is you need to go and start hanging out where the people that you share an interest with hang out, and don't fake it. Don't say that you're a world-class speed walker if you don't walk, if you don't train, because they're going to out you and then they're going to ostracize you. Go with what you know. Start small and, and just remember to follow the rules. Uh, let's see. Other than that, you want to link your share accounts so that you can get as much bang for your buck. So if I were to share this on Facebook, It's going to ask me if I want to share it on my timeline, on a friend's timeline, in a group, or on a page I manage. If you're not building a business page, and at this point, I don't know that it's necessary for you to build a business page. I really don't. 
um, there's reasons for that. Um, I would say share it on your timeline. And I would say something about it. I have to write this. My friends keep yelling at me. Share the link. That's now going to appear on my Facebook page. And if they're still connected on my Twitter page and my LinkedIn page. So, uh, we're almost out of time. I want to make sure I leave time for questions. If you are interested in the HTML code, for the Project Mama sites, just go to support on your member center and type in Project Mama. Let's hope this still works. Uh, that's gone. Okie dokie. Uh, email me at fieldsupport at shackley.com and I will send you the, the HTML code and the instructions for creating the nested pages. Um, you're basically just linking one page to the next to the next. Um, Bob, did you have anything you wanted to add before I open it up for, for questions? No, let's open it up for questions. This has been absolutely brilliant. I'm sure a lot of people feel a little um, job well, back by all the information, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, that's why we recorded it and why we're going to be meeting together as a group every two weeks. and. Uh, and, and Lee, also, uh, why don't you just go over uh, before we take questions? What uh, what's the schedule of your training? I know it's on the website, but let's right. let's, let's put it out verbally. So, to find my training calls, just go to the search box and type in my business training. And my link is the my business training calls. I would bookmark this page so you don't have to go find it every time. Um, I have three classes a week. Mondays is always the same. Mondays is always the new distributor onboarding webinar where I give them a tour of the site and I talk to them about creating their list and getting started with their uh, business building activities um, and then where to find training and how to reach Shackley. On Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Pacific, I uh, follow this schedule of calls. Uh, it's a rotating schedule of, I want to say, six calls where we cover each section of my business. We cover um, the personal website. We talk about social media marketing best practices and how to create your marketing plan. And then we have um, an, an actual open call where you can just come with anything that's in your way. And as long as it's something I do, we talk about it. Uh, the login information is at the right. It's the same information you use to come here. Um, and then there are training workbooks. These training workbooks mirror the calls. Uh, you can download them. There are exercises in the back to reinforce what I'm teaching in the first part of the book. Uh, then below that are arch archived versions of the training calls. <clears throat> and so basically it would just be like what we did today. Uh, recording one of our live training calls. Below that are short videos that shortcut you. To, so for instance, if you want to know how to embed a video in an email, you can watch a five minute video instead of an entire one hour class on emails, e-invites, and templates. Uh, so that information is available all the time. Uh, beneath that are some other training material I, I created or that I got off online. Uh, there's one is 10 ways to increase your Twitter followers, how to generate leads using LinkedIn. Uh, there's my GRINS program, which is um, an incentivization program for business leaders to incentivize certain activities from their personal group. And then there's some, uh, some other training material there. Uh, so um, again, every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific. Uh, and if you can't make a live call, then just use the uh, the other training material that I've created. Um, Jim, you uh, Jim, you might have to wait to ask me that question out loud because I don't have enough information to answer it what you typed. So, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the call for questions. Stand by and follow my instruction. One second. Line unmuted. 
All right. If you do not have a question at this time, please hit star one on your phone. All right. I'll ta start at the top of the list. Amy, do you have a question for me? Amy Wolf? Okay, I'm guessing not. Uh, let's see, the next person is Bobby. Bobby, do you have a question for me? Uh, yes, I was, I was trying to catch up with you on regarding finding the, um, the, the place to click on the whole Google Alert thing. Uh, oh. Can, can you locate that for me in the beginning? Where do we find that? It's google.com forward slash alerts. Oh, we go to Google first. Yes, ma'am. I thought we did it from our member center page. No. That there was a place there. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, got I'm it. I'm on the same thing. leave one until 4 o'clock uh, with Bob. Okay. Donna, do you have a question for me? For a website yes. and everything else. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Your okay. first thing was to drive them to the saved pages. And I didn't get what we needed to do to get them there. It was a, there was a list of things that you needed to do. So when you have a page that you want people to visit, let's just say my my vitamin page, you're going to go to share this, and you're going to select yep. the channel you want to share to. Okay. So if if it's if it's Facebook, then you have to log into your Facebook and share it to Facebook. My best advice, if you're sharing this content on Facebook, ask a question, ask your followers to do something about it. Um, so that it's not just sitting there, so that you get, um, you know, you get a response. You want to, to them to engage and go to your personal website. So you say, hey, guys, I just posted my vitamin D quiz. I challenge you to take the quiz and post uh, how much D you do or don't need. Boom. Great. You're asking them something specific. Great. I do you like have that. another question for me? Uh, I have many, but I think at this point I'm, I'm just going to have to go back and, and uh, review this because you've got, you've got a lot of tech, a lot of technical stuff that I'm going to yeah. try myself. Your your website again, then the way to to do the training was what? So the training uh, link. The training link. is on my Shackley under yeah. my business training calls. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Doobie, do you have questions for me? Let's see. I got to figure out which one's muted and which one's not. Let's try that. Doobie. Okay, that muted it back. Let me try it one more time. Can you hear me, Lee? Gotcha. Hey, good. First of all, I want to say this was extraordinary. I really loved it. Uh, very informative. Wrote copious notes and ready to uh, match that Malaysian master coordinator who sponsored 42 masters underneath uh, herself just from her bed. Room here. Wow. So, uh, here we go. <laughs> Hang out with her. Yeah, I know. I wonder how she did all that. 42 masters and never left the house. Look at that, huh? So, um, pretty cool. Okay. I just had a quick question here, and I'm sure I could go back and listen to the whole thing, but uh, setting up that um, questionnaire thing, you said something about Q something or other. Oh, where, quack where? Dot IT. Um, quack? Quack, dot like a duck, dot yep. IT. It's a website that gives free HTML code for forms. Um, oh, I, let me try it again. Quack it. I spelled it wrong. Quackit.com. Let's try that. There it is. Quackit.com. I had the, I, uh, the URL wrong. And so yep. what you're going to want to do is do a search on there for HTML forms. Um, that's if you want to get started now. We're going to be um, working on this for you, but if you want... What what I did, it was under forms. Right. Do, 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 do. Hold on, I'm looking for it. Color codes, things, codes. Right. Not a key. Forms, way down on the left, form yeah, codes. Okay, yep. Yep. Mail to form is one of the ones that I did. HTML yep. form to email. And so it'll give you options for drop down menus versus. Um, uh, Radio buttons versus check boxes, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's all there. Okay, much appreciated. Thanks so much. No problem. Uh, Florence, do you have a question for me? 
Okay. Uh, Jim, your turn. Uh, yes, I think you've just answered it, and that's where we can get the uh, lead capture form. Is that correct? That is correct, and you can customize it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see. We have Peg next. Peg? Okay. And Susan, do you have a question for me? Yes, I do. Hi, I'm in Tucson. Thank you for doing this. You're welcome. I wanted to know if you think that on the About Me page we're not supposed to, you don't advise doing our Shackley testimonials, then where would, you, correct. where would we put that? You would just make another page and not put it on your... Um, on your navigation menu, you would just send that to people either using social media or email. Um, you want to link people to it so they can read it. But not everyone coming to your page is interested in that story, and so you want to be sure not to overwhelm people by having it there. Plus, I'll be honest with you guys, the FDA is really cracking down on testimonials, and because because you know we don't cure diseases, and so we're being held accountable for the things that y'all post on your pages. Uh, so if the only people who can see a page are the people you send the link to, you can stay under the radar with the FDA, and so can we. And thank you very much for doing that for us. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Phone number fifty. Ending in 5905, do you have a question for me? Oh, yeah, that's Anne. Hi. Hi. <laughs> you caught me off guard there. I was waiting for my name. So, um, Lee, you know, I have been putting a lot of stuff on Facebook and then linking back to my PWS, but the, you're kind of suggesting a, a reverse path to link from the PWS to Facebook. Does it really matter in terms of effectiveness? Um, well, no, but, but what it, it, what, what, the reading that I did about this, it's called a link back. So the information starts somewhere, goes somewhere else, and links back. If you yeah. just start in Facebook, it's just a link. Right? And, link, that, and a link back is, is superior? It's, well, yeah, social, uh, search engines tend to, to like link backs because it indicates more traffic. Oh, I'm going to read here. I got it from here, but I'm going to go here. Then I'm going to go back here and talk about it. it. It generates a little more activity. And that's my understanding of what I read. R remember, I'm just, I didn't go to school for this stuff. I just study it online. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you want to generate more search results for your original site, it's important. But we know that the Shappy site does not get search uh, standing because we have so many of them. So I don't think that really matters. Um, so I just wondered if there was something else, some other issue that, that was valuable. No, uh, it's, just, it's just what I noticed with my own site when I started doing my Google, an Google Analytics um, okay. and sharing the pages that way. I noticed a lot more incoming traffic. Um, and I noticed that I was getting new traffic over repeat traffic, uh, which was interesting. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the only reason why I say to do it that way. Okay, okay, thanks. And then I just read an article um, by direct selling media, social media people who say that Facebook is going to start um, penalizing people for putting in, um, for just linking the posts and not actually putting the post in the message itself. Are you familiar with that new? Um, I have uh, not read it them? yet. I'll have to go okay. check it out. If you if you guys yeah. are not a member of the DSEF or following the DSEF on Facebook, I recommend it. Uh, they uh, help me stay way on track when it comes to social media. Yeah, that might have been where I read it. I don't I don't remember for sure. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is, I understand why you don't why it's not a good idea to have all of the customized pages on the the menu to the left because it would be overwhelming. I hadn't thought about that before, but it makes sense. Is it necessary then to hide them from searches if they're not on the left? I mean, can you have them exposed to searches and not be listed? Yes, absolutely. The only and ones that I would hide from search uh, are the ones that have uh, testimonials. Okay. Um, and and I don't want to know if y'all are making claims that you're not supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Okay. But otherwise, it doesn't, is there any other reason to hide them 
Um, no, not really. Search? No. Okay. I mean, let's face it. It, uh, it would take a miracle for someone to find a, a website yeah, called member.myshackley.com forward slash US forward slash EN forward slash my website forward yeah, slash yeah, yeah. work underscore from underscore home underscore HTML. You're right, right about that. Yeah. <laughs> I really got to want it bad. Yeah, on page 32 at the bottom, Lee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, the next one I have is phone number ending in 3808. Do you have a question for me? No, nope, all set. Okay. Uh, well, that's it, Bob. That's the end of the list of people who are. I have one more question, Lee. Oh, sure. Um, this is Doobie again. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so you made a reference to the business. Facebook page, and you're saying not a good idea? Well, I mean, the you can elaborate is on that. making so difficult right now. I mean, in order for the people who have liked, well, let's, let's take a, a step back. How many of you have other Shackley distributors who've liked your business page as opposed to your customers and your non-member friends and customers? If the whole majority of people liking your business page or other people in Shackley, you've just defeated the purpose of having a business page. Because all you're going to do there is talk to each other about what you already know. And if you're lucky like I am, people are going to steal your content and go post it on their page and pretend they made it up. So the second piece is Facebook has recently made it really difficult for – you to interact with the fans of your page, um, and now they want you to pay to boost your post. So, so I, I, I am not, I don't have the firmest grasp, grasp on what they did. But my understanding mm -hmm. is that you may have 500 fans of your page, but if you don't interact with them, like on a regular basis, and I when by interact, I mean like like something, comment, share something they posted. If there is no direct engagement between you and every one of those fans, it takes about a week, and Facebook stops showing them your stuff. Mm -hmm. So now you're talking to yourself. <laughs> well, you're already yeah. exactly, so that's not going to help. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so until Facebook gets with the program, I'd forget the business page for right now and use your personal page or create a secondary business, uh, a secondary personal page with your business name on it, right? Not a business page, maybe a fan page or whatever, because you're never going to talk about Shackley on it. You're going to talk about health tips. You're going to talk about career options, uh, securing your future, but you're never going to talk about Shackley, and that's how you'll stay in compliance. Mm -hmm, Does that mm -hmm, make sense? Mm -hmm. That makes less sense. So you're saying have a second personal page in which if my company, I call it Wellness Standard, I could call it Wellness Standard as mm -hmm. opposed to write Jude Doobie Gordon or something like that. Mm -hmm. But keep it personal, not a business page, yeah. and use that. Because on my personal page, I may have other extraneous information or things that may be connected to politics or may be connected to, I don't know what, uh, things right. that may Religion. be referencing. The two, the number two, one and two hot topics that you're not supposed to discuss if you're doing business on the internet: politics, politics. and religion. You got it. Yeah. So yep. you know, and maybe somebody doesn't like that I tell you know Cajun jokes. It, it could be that simple. So yeah, keep them separate, mm -hmm. and then don't. And this is my best advice: don't invite all your friends, your builders, and other Shackley distributors to like your page or to friend you on that page. That page is for your customers and your friends who you, your prospects right this is the page mm -hmm. you introduce people to come like my come be friends with me on facebook not your personal page um mm -hmm. and and you're going to post to the public using hashtags hashtags of keywords that people who are interested in what you're talking about can find because they do a google search or a twitter search or whatever right keep right. keep your business life separate from your personal life Right, right. So you're not posting pictures of the kids unless that's the purpose of connecting that to what your message or whatever. Well, is. what if your kids are all drinking a performance uh, drink because y'all right. no, just took a hike? To your business. Totally yeah. appropriate. Absolutely, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. But perfect. Okay, so okay. keep them separate. And, yeah. Um, Don't cross pollinate. <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay. And I can still post on my personal page that I share 
10 different subjects on as well from time to time. Oh, Same sure. from hearsay on that as well. Yeah, about an 80-20, so 80% uh, your stuff, 20% hearsay. Okay. So let's say you post three times a day about, you know, all those things that you're not supposed to do in business. Huh? Um, huh. You know, put one a day of hearsay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, you okay. do know that you can create your own posts in hearsay. You don't have to use their content. Correct, correct. Yeah. So you can do that to either account. Because you'll have two accounts set up, you can mm-hmm. connect to your other account. So and I you can, can schedule post. all of your posts through hearsay. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I can post to multiple accounts on Facebook, mm-hmm. or at least two of them there, mm-hmm. at the same time from hearsay, mm-hmm. so that it goes to both locations besides my LinkedIn and besides wherever else I want to send. Or either or, right? You can set up a post to go to one Facebook account but not the other. Okay. So that's mm-hmm. safe for you, too. Okay. Excellent. Very important. Thank you. You're welcome. Can you restate how we get the URL for these hidden pages so we can use it as a link? Sure. When you go to your My Website content page, um, all of your saved pages, think of this as a library. When you click View, it opens that page, and you can just copy the URL. Thank you. You're welcome. Me, I think we'll uh, we'll 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 uh, close everything up now. But thank you all for being on, and we'll set the next uh, event and. Um, This has just been great.